Good morning. Welcome as we do gather together for, for worship this morning, as we come together from our place, from our homes, and from our own sacred spaces. Uh, but we do gather on this space in virtual reality. Um, and so uh, we come together on this Trinity Sunday when we remember what we are named for, not just Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, but the ways we're called to live that out. We do continue to pray for all those who are listed in your bulletin. As always, if you have additional names to add to that list, please just include them on the scrolling um, uh, and to check, it, to check in as well to let me know that you're there. Say a, a quick hi or peace uh, to let me know so I can look at that later. So we also do keep in our prayers uh, Danielle Nestor, who's having some surgery on her ankle on Tuesday. Keep her in your prayers. And also prayers for Kim, who's going through a difficult time as well as for our country and our world, both with the, the stress of the COVID-19 uh, virus, as well as all the unrest uh, and, um, and rallies and the things that are going on around our world and country. So we keep all of that seeking God's peace and justice uh, in our time. So let us begin as we gather together, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, as we use our opening litany. <clears throat> Mysterious God, Grace beyond all we know. Love before all we need. We cannot comprehend your majesty. We know your presence in our lives. You who knew us before we were born. You who will cradle us after our last breath. We cannot encompass your glory. Instead, we marvel at all the works your hands have made. And we worship and adore you. It seems too good to be true. That you would care for mere mortals like us. In our messy lives, often caught up in trivialities. That you would mold us in your own image. Social creatures with a divine spark. So, so good, we rather, rather not believe. Rather not see your image in those around us. Crying out for love and companionship. Rather not see your wisdom underpinning creation. Growing at our wants and waste. God above all, help us with our unbelief, our, our self-serving acts. We take a moment to reflect and pause to think over this past week, where those times where we have needed God's forgiveness and grace. For mercy into our hearts and souls, giving us eyes to see and ears to hear your gift in every person, every place, every moment. For your greatness is seen in all the world. May our words and actions be our praise of you, reaching up and out into your kingdom, made real for us in the person of Jesus, who taught us so much, including how to love as we have been loved, to forgive as we have been forgiven, and to offer compassion as we receive the never-ending compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of the universe breathes the spirit of grace into our hearts. The love of Christ born on the cross frees us from the sin that bound us, and by the power of Almighty God we are forgiven of all our sins. Thanks be to God. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and then the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet. And with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the threshold shook at the voice of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. So just a brief time with kids. Um, today we're talking about the Trinity, probably one of the hardest things to try to get, wrap our heads around of how is there one God, but we call God three different names of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how does that all work? And people throughout the ages have tried to explain it, and the more we try, the less we get to it. But one of the easiest ways um, I found to, to describe it is to think about ourselves. So I'm a pastor, uh, and so I relate to many of you as a pastor. Um, I am also a daughter, and so I relate to my mom as the, that, that she's my mother and our daughter relationship, So, but not as a pastor. I'm not her pastor. Uh, and the same is true with my friends, that while well, some friends are part of the congregation and it's a kind of a dual role, but other, other folks outside I'm friends with and not their pastor. And so, but I'm still the same person. I'm not three people. So think about the different ways that you are, relate to different people, maybe with your teachers or with your parents or with your friends or your siblings, that they're all different ways that we relate to one another. And the same is with God, that God relates to us as Father and as Son and as Holy Spirit, but it's one God and what it tells us about God. So we'll talk a little bit more about that during the Sunday school time uh, at 1030. So we'll see you then uh, for that. We can, we can share some more. So grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The Trinity is one of those things that, uh, in fact, I was doing a Bible study on it this past Wednesday for a Wednesday night group, and I was trying to find some different quotes to use for them that would help explain it. And I have numerous theologians that try to talk about the Trinity, and the more they, I couldn't find a simple explanation, basically. (laughs) There was nothing that was just brief and concise. In fact, most of the ones that were most easily understandable basically said, it's a mystery. (laughs) We don't understand, and and some of that's very true, that it's kind of beyond our comprehension to be able to wrap our minds around how is God three but one, and how do they all work together? In fact, that's a lot of how our creeds came to be. In the early church, around the 300s or so, there was lots of different understandings about who Jesus was. Was he human and divine, or wasn't he? Uh, What was this trinity about? How do we relate to the, the Jewish Uh, part of the Bible as well as now the Christian. How do those come together? What books should be included in the Bible? So in all that time, they're trying to make sense and kind of come to a a, a general consensus or an understanding about who God was to help people understand that. Because there was lots of different people had different understandings, and that's even true today. But then was even more so. Wherever you went, someone had a different understanding. In fact, One of Paul's letters not that long ago says, you know, he's talking about, you know, you belong to Apollos or you belong to Cephas or you belong to Paul, that there's all those different understandings of what it meant to believe in Christ, to believe in Jesus. And so this is where our creeds kind of grew out of. Uh, we'll, we'll, we've been using, we use the Nicene Creed for quite a while, which goes into a lot more detail. The Apostles' Creed is a little simpler, kind of, here's the basics. And then there's the Athanasian Creed, which you many probably haven't heard of, although I think someone was telling me on Wednesday that they had to memorize it. Now, I don't have, it's not in our hymnals now, but it was in our green hymnals, uh, and it's, first of all, very long. And the more it talks about how the three parts are related, the more confused you can get. And so what does it mean to believe in the Trinity? But in some ways, I think we almost get it back, not so much backwards, but I think we kind of miss the point with it. Because it's not just about understanding who the Trinity is, but what does it tell? What does the Trinity tell us about God? Not so much about how God works within God's self, because that's beyond our comprehension. That will be added to our list of questions to ask God when we get there, and probably it won't make any difference when we get there anyway. But how, what does it tell us about who our God is, as relates to us as? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The God, the Father, in whose image we are created. God, the Father, who's the one who created all that beauty outside that we're blessed to enjoy in these, in sometimes very dark and chaotic times, at least we have the beauty of nature to look to, to see God's hand at work in that. Or the beauty of so many different people and faces and experiences throughout the world that none of us are exactly the same, not even twins, are exactly the same, even if they're identical. That we're all different, we're all unique, we're all still though created in God's image. And that's what we see with God the Father. God the Son, Jesus Christ, gives us that real face, that God walking amongst us and being with us in the midst of our struggles. That we remember that even as we struggle, even as we go through life, that Jesus experienced all those things that we did. Not in the same way, sometimes he didn't have internet. (laughs) He probably knew about it, but he didn't have internet. (laughs) But still could relate to people as they walk through their lives, as they lived as sometimes outcasts in society. That That those are the ones that he reached out to, the most vulnerable and the most marginalized. That he also ate with, not with just tax collectors and sinners, but with Pharisees of people of all different experiences and lives, people who were hurting and who were struggling, people who were questioning like Nicodemus, people who were uncertain, and people who were in need of forgiveness. God walked amongst us as Jesus to not only teach and heal, but to go to the cross, to show that that barrier, that, that, that finality that we see in death was not the end, but rather that gateway, that path to eternity, that way in which we are no longer separated from God, that it's not about us getting ourselves into heaven, 
but it is about the ways in which God brings heaven to us and opens that door. That God receives us with open arms. And God the Spirit. Now, last week was Pentecost, and so we had kind of the focus on the Spirit, the wind moving amongst us. God's Spirit moving in and amongst us where we can't see, and it's God much more elusive today that we can't kind of pin down God. But God who is with us and gives us the gifts and the abilities that we have, that calls us together as a church, often in new ways, but calls us to be the church in this time and inspires us and guides us and continues to offer us grace and forgiveness. Now, the Trinity is not mentioned so much by name, but referred to. John's Gospel has a lot about the Father and the Spirit and the Son in there. But then here at the end of Matthew's Gospel, we have these this very familiar words of Jesus' great commission to his disciples. To go, therefore, into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Of going out and making disciples. Now, the interesting thing is, on, on Wednesday mornings, I have a, um, a clergy group that meets, and we're still meeting on Zoom. Uh, and we talk about the different texts, and, and we do a, some of our own reading, and then we bring that all together. Uh, and one of the pastors, uh, Pastor uh, Roger Berner, who's at uh, the interim right now at uh, Emmanuel in Pleasantville, said he was looking at that phrase about making disciples. And when he looked at the original Greek, it was, some, it was something quite different than just make disciples. It was make learners. That it was more than about more than just bringing people to Jesus, more than saying come and follow, but it was teaching them about what it meant to follow, to follow, but what it also means to believe in this God who's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To do more than just teach them with our words, but to go therefore into all nations and yes, use our words and our experiences, but more than that, show them what that looks like. Show the world what it means to believe in the God who created us. Show the world what it means to believe in the one who forgives us, to show the world the ways in which our God is with us always. To live that out faithfully both in how we learn for ourselves, but to go and make disciples, to go and make learners, to teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And what did Jesus command? Jesus commanded love. To love the Lord our God, to love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with all our hearts and souls and minds, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's what Jesus showed us. That's what God commands us to obey. And so we need to constantly learn and find the ways in which God not only loves and forgives me, because I certainly need it, but also the ways in which God calls us to love and serve our neighbor. Those we know, those we don't know, those whom we'll see and those whom we'll never see, but to go and help the world see the Trinity, not as some doctrine to memorize or to learn about, to read books about, but to see the Trinity as the ways in which God relates to us and the ways in which we can relate to one another. To see one another as also God's beloved of created in God's image. To see one another as God's people, as ones who are, who are, who are also given love and forgiveness and grace. To see one another as the Spirit sees us and moves in and amongst us, offering us gifts and abilities and the ways in which God calls us to be his people together. And so we believe in the Trinity, not as some doctrine. We can do lots of reading about it, but again, most of it then finally gets down to, we don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's that hem of the robe that we see in Isaiah, that that's how much we know of God. But that what we do know of God is pretty amazing. It's the God who created us and loves us and is with us always, especially in this time, but especially in all times. 
and is with us always to the end of the age. And it's for this that we do proclaim, thanks be to God. believe and trust in our God who comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do proclaim that faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain the world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice 
in often ignored communities like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all the whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day. We lift up this day And for all those who have no one to name them, hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in all our lives. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Here other petitions may be offered. Pray for Danielle as she has surgery on Tuesday. May it bring her healing and relief. For Kim, who's going through a difficult time, and for all others who are in need of prayers in this time. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those that we sigh with, with, sigh that, with sighs that are too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. And now we offer up our offerings for this week for those that we have received online as well as those we receive in the mail. Holy One, whose heart abounds with gifts, receive this offering as a sign of our intention to live surrounded by your mercy, inspired by your spirit, open to the joy of your presence, hospitable to one another, and generous toward the world. Amen. And so we now pray for the power of the Spirit among all people, God of all power and love. We give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, and rest and grow in the Spirit wherever and however we gather. Unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And so we pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
So a few th different things going on. Um, we do have a task force that has now uh, started to work uh, on uh, what happens when we are able to come back together of how we can prepare our worship space and what kinds of preparations need to be made. Uh, so we do have a survey online or you can, those questions are there in your bulletin. You can just send them uh, to me at the office or, or do the survey as well. There will also be a watch party this afternoon. Um, uh, presiding Bishop uh, Elizabeth Eaton has provided actually a whole service, but I'll, I'll share the sermon uh, for the whole ELCA. If you'd like to not only hear her, but join in that, I'll be doing that at 1 o'clock. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube, um, and I'll post that here to Facebook as well. Um, also, some other things. Uh, we'll, we're starting a new series uh, next Sunday for our summer worship series. It's called Unraveled. Uh, there will be a study journal with that, um, as well as a craft project uh, that we can do here together, uh, as well as at home. So I'll be providing more information during the week, um, but watch for that next for the next Sunday. And so we'll hear a variety of stories uh, throughout uh, the summer. We'll start off with Sarah laughing. Uh, some of the other stories are the Samaritan woman at the well and Zacchaeus, Job, and more. So, uh, so do watch for that. Our book club does continue to meet, um, and we'll be meeting on Monday, the, the June 15th. I didn't put June in there, but it'll be Monday, June 15th uh, at 7 o'clock. So if you're interested, in the information for that is there. And there's also some updates about some of the recycling efforts we do here. We're still not taking any um, recyclings here ourselves, just for now. Uh, if, if we're able to change that, we'll let you know. But if you're doing your own recycling, there are some ways... Uh, to do that, but we're also not taking, uh, the company's not taking um, cereal bags anymore. So if you have questions, you can let me know, or Georgina, uh, she has more information uh, if you have some questions. Uh, so do keep up to date on all the things that we're sending out. Always the updates are provided not only through email, but also on our website, uh, trinitybrewsternewyork.org, uh, where you can find that, uh, as well as here on Facebook. <coughs> And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in our final hymn. <coughs> Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.
The worship has ended. Let the service begin. We'll see folks at coffee hour at noon uh, as well as the watch party at 1. See you later.